check views after uh, on cue, it is being recorded, and it will be available on our ANJAC uh, YouTube channel, which is called um, ANJAC Views. And we do have a chat button, so please post your questions in there and we'll be monitoring them. And we'll also be answering them at the end of our session. And take a few minutes to introduce yourselves and let us know your name and what town you're calling in from. And um, I'd love to hear if anybody has gone to all of our sessions. So we are at number six. All right, for, so we're excited for today. It's, uh, as I said, it's gonna be all about plastics. We have three phenomenal speakers. Um, first up will be Sandra Bodner, and she's currently a consultant in the energy field. Her prior work includes serving as a director for the Coalition for the Delaware River Watershed, where she advanced federal policy aimed at increasing funding for conservation efforts. Prior to that, Sandra was with New York, New Jersey Baykeepers Policy um, and Communication Director, where she advanced single-use plastics research, advocacy, and education. Sandra is an ANJAG Board of Trustees member, yay, as of uh, January this year, and she serves on Howell Township's Green Team. She holds an MA in Public Policy and a BA in Political Science and History from Monmouth University. Um, and next up, we have Barbara, uh, who's with Go Green Galloway, as well as Green Market, and she has served as a Chief Sustainability Officer for Galloway Township until her retirement in 2016. For 25 years, she was charged with the Townships Environmental Education Programs, the Clean Communities Program, and was the recipient of many state and local awards during that time. Barbara initiated the Task Force for Sustainable Galloway in 2009 and was the chair of this organization until her retirement, aiding in the township's achievement of Sustainable Jersey Silver Certification. Barbara continues to serve Go Green and Galloway as co-chair and Green Market co-chair. And along with Barbara from Galloway Township, we have Mary Crawford, who serves, <coughs> excuse me, as co-chair of Galloway Township's green team, um, Go Green Galloway. She's been involved with the group for over 10 years and coordinates volunteer meetings and activities, including the farmer's market. Mary was elected to Galloway Town Council and served from 2017 through 2021. And um, she's a financial advisor with Merrill Lynch and has uh, 20 years of experience in the industry. So we have a great lineup um, and um, I'm excited. Um, so what else is coming up for ANJAC? Just a couple more slides. For April 22nd, we are doing a virtual Earth Day celebration. And I'm sure you guys have seen this slide over the last few sessions. So I hope you have your thinking caps on. We, it's such a great opportunity to promote all the fantastic work you're doing. Um, and uh, where it's gonna be more information coming. Uh, so check your email and your inbox about that. But it's, uh, I hope you guys sign up. Um, so along with your membership, ANCHEC really relies on individual donors to help us continue to support all the local environmental work that we do. So please consider a donation to ANJAC. And I think that's all I have. I'm gonna stop share and Sandra, I'm gonna invite you to share your screen. Thank you so much, Dini. I'm just gonna share my screen. Can everyone see the PowerPoint? Yes. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much everyone for joining tonight. Um, so I'm Sandra Miola Bodner. I'm, as Dini mentioned, um, I am a very new board member of ANJAC, and I am so thrilled to serve on the board of such a fantastic organization. Um, so the Plastic Pollution Reduction Law was signed into law by Governor Murphy about a year and a half ago in uh, November of 2020 in response to the threats uh, plastics, particularly single-use plastics, posed to the environment, wildlife, and public health. And during the pandemic, um, there was an explosion in plastic usage, everything from food takeout materials to an increase in online shopping. So it's about time we phase out these unnecessary materials. You might be asking yourself, why am I showing Audrey Hepburn on my screen? So the, um, the two photos I'm about to show are some of my favorites to show when I talk about plastics. Um, notice her wastebasket is lined with newspaper and not plastics. We didn't always have plastics. Um, it wasn't until after World War II that plastic production boomed and convenience food was really popular as women went to the workforce more and more and they wanted to come home and, you know, 
make it easy on themselves, I guess. Um, so this is, was a cover of uh, Life magazine in 1956, I believe, um, the throwaway lifestyle. Uh, um, so what does the law exactly do? Um, three things, it tackles foam, bags, and straws. As of this past November, plastic straws are only available by request. And beginning in May, May 4th, uh, 2022, paper and plastic bags, along with polystyrene uh, foam food service products will also be banned. Um, I'm gonna talk about bags first. Um, so like I said, you know, less than two months away, this law goes into, into effect on May 4th. Um, paper and plastic bags will be banned. I affectionately refer, maybe not affectionately, um, I refer to plastic bags sometimes as urban tumbleweeds when I see them cruising down a street or stuck on a, stuck in a tree. Um, you know, they're one of the worst of the worst. Um, the paper bag ban only applies to stores over 2,500 square feet. So smaller stores are exempt from the paper bag ban and can continue to provide paper free of charge to customers. Um, so what kind of bags are exempt or are allowed? Um, you know, to clarify, the bags banned are the carry out bags at the point of sale, the bags you use to bag your groceries with the cashier. Um, exempt bags include the ones used for like raw meat and fish when you go to the deli counter, the bags you put your fruits and vegetables in, um, the flour, the plastic bags that hold like flowers, bags provided at a pharmacy, dry cleaning, and the list is all here. And, you know, I think it's important to recognize that as we transition, we'll want to encourage consumers to bring their own reusable bags with them when they shop at all times, BYO bag, um, and remembering reusable bags will prevent folks from having to purchase bags at the checkout line. Um, and New Jersey's law has a really strong definition of reusable bags. Um, it's modeled after California's law. Um, reusable bags can be made from any washable fabric and must have stitched handles and must be able to be used at least 125 times. Um, a lot of municipalities throughout the state have chosen to host reusable bag giveaways already to prepare community members for this change of habit that everyone is going to go through in two months if they haven't already. Um, New Jersey Clean Communities, uh, which is a state-based program, um, has $500,000 per the law. Um, so 500K, 1,000K per year set aside for the first three years of the bill's implementation. And that money is purposed for education and also reusable bag giveaways. So what municipalities can do, apply to commun um, clean communities funding on the website um, to support these efforts and then use that money to pay for the reusable bags. Um, next, foam. Um, so we're going to say goodbye to polystyrene foam food products. Um, polystyrene foam, most folks know it as one of the popular brand names called Styrofoam. Um, foam will be banned from food service establishments on May 4th, uh, starting May 4th. So no more Styrofoam coffee cups and such like that. Um, this means you also won't be able to purchase Styrofoam cups and plates at the grocery store either. Um, there is a two-year extension for meat and fish trays and prepackaged food, so we'll see how that rolls out with the state. Um, also, under this umbrella of the law, events hosted in, munis in New Jersey municipalities, things like concerts and fairs, et cetera, they're, all, they're not exempt. They must comply with the styrofoam ban as well. Um, you know, if, if a food service establishment does have an economic hardship, there is a waiver that the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection can grant um, upon application. And you'll, I'll, I'll provide that email and phone number um, for the DEP later on in the slot in the resource slides later. Um, but yeah, you've probably noticed Dunkin' Donuts has switched completely to, from foam to paper, yay. And last up, straws. So straws as of this past November, November, 2021, they are only available by, by request. So you have to ask for one and that you aren't automatically provided with a straw. Um, in, in the law, restaurants and other food service businesses 
are required still to keep um, kind of a stash of, of single use plastic straws um, to make sure that that um, customers can can get one if they if they want one or need one. Um, you might be asking yourself like, well, what about those little juice, those little straws that are attached to like my kids apple juice boxes, um, or maybe they're your juice boxes, you know, whatever. I like juice boxes sometimes, um, but those can still be sold in stores. So um, fear not for the juice box lovers in the audience. Uh, let's see. So some frequently asked questions. Um, if your municipality has a plastics ordinance on the books currently, it will remain active until May 4th. But once May 4th rolls around, the state law will supersede that municipal law. Um, enforcement, some of the fun stuff, and this is where it gets a little tricky too. So according to the law, any business um, found in violation will get a warning on its first offense. Second offense is $1,000. Third and any subsequent offenses is $5,000. Um, but the money, you know, it has, um, it's being directed and would be split 70 30 between the Clean Communities Fund and 30% going toward the municip municipality where the offense occurred. Um, so, enforcement, and this is where I mentioned it gets a little tricky. So, enforcement is handled by New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, the DEP but it's really up to the township to report a violation to DEP um, or have the County Public Health Commission get involved and elevate it. Um, so there are a ton of resources, <clears throat> excuse me, resources on all of the components of the law that I just kind of sped through right here. Um, the state has a plethora of resources uh, New Jersey, the New Jersey Action Center has a really great list of vendors and reusable bag manufacturers, um, alternatives to foam, which is a big one, especially for food service businesses um, that folks might need to comply. Um, they're all on that website, that first link up there. And then, you know, also the links, the other links that are listed here are to DEP's web, web pages. And ANJAC has a really great web page, NewJerseyNoPlastics.org where you can find you know, tons of resources like infographics, um, images, fact sheets, um, more frequently asked questions, and all of that good stuff. Um, so what does my town need to do, you might be asking yourself. So these are a couple you know, just suggestions, making sure that local businesses are educated through any marketing means possible that your township uh, currently undertakes, newsletters, press releases, um, if your township has an active social media page, um, continuing to encourage residents to bring reusables to stores. Also, you know, get ahead of the game and, and start, you know, bringing your own straw if you're, if, if you're a straw fan. Um, also making sure, you know, if you would like to host a reusable bag giveaway, contact Clean Communities and start working with them um, before, the, before the implementation date in May so folks are prepped and ready to go and there aren't any surprises. And then lastly, you know, the non-compliance the, the non issue. And, you know, I, I'm sure everyone is aware of the, um, you know, supply chain issues going on right now. And, you know, it's difficult to get reusable bags. It's difficult to kind of get, you know, a lot of things right now. So, that, you know, just um, we'll kind of see what happens in May in terms of, um, you know, enforcement and compliance. But, you know, um, figuring out how your town um, will respond, you know, if it's through the, the township itself or the county is going to directly contact DEP, et cetera. And what can you personally do? So vote with your wallet. I love this one. Um, say yes to reusables. Um, say no straw, please. Um, all, of, all of these kind of things that um, you know you can do that that will make a big difference in addition to the law rolling out. And social media. I'm I'm sure you know. I've been hearing like grumblings, you know, when I'm at the store, um, when cashiers are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we ran out of plastic. I was in a Kohl's the other day where the cashier was like, oh, we ran out of plastic bags. Like, where are the rest of them? And the other coworker said like, well, no, like that's it. We don't have any more. Like we're gonna, you know, we're not, we're not supplying out bags anymore. And the, the other cashier was like, what do you mean? So there's a lot of, you know, there's still a lot of folks that 
are still being educated and just like making sure the word gets out there as quickly and um, folks are as informed as, as humanly possible. Um, and I think that's that's all I have. So Dini, I'll turn it I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Sandra. I appreciate that. Um, I think I'll just answer one question here, and then we'll um, take more questions at the end. Uh, there was a question that came up from Stanley about enforcement on the fines. Is it $1,000 for first events per day or in total? It's a really good question. Um, so this is something that the DEP is still working on a guidance document and that has not been rolled out yet. It should be coming pretty soon. Um, in our analysis of the way the law reads, we're anticipating per day. So more to come on that, but the first offense is, is, um, is just a warning. Um, so with that, um, and please continue to keep posting your questions in the chat and we'll, we'll get to those. Um, Mary, do you want to take over? I'll stop, uh, I'll stop talking. Sure. <laughs> no problem. I can um, share my screen here with everybody. All right, so um, thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Mary Crawford I'm, and Barb Feather and I uh, represent Go Green Galloway, which is our, our green team. Um, we wanted to share with you what, what we've done over the past uh, year and a half or so uh, regarding plastics and reduction of plastic usage um, within our community and trying to get the word out. Um, it kind of was wonderful timing. Um, we sat around a table in December of 19, uh, 2019 to talk about applying for a grant through Sustainable Jersey. And we wanted to go big. They had a $20,000 grant um, and we wanted to come up with something good that was comprehensive. And we came to the conclusion unanimously really that we wanted to go after single use plastics and just in general reducing the use of plastics um, as much as we could uh, within our community. And then the plastic Pollution Act was, was put in in November of 2020. So it just dovetailed nicely and kind of focused our efforts and just gave them a little bit more uh, zing, I would say, as, as we kind of went through it. So it, it really worked out pretty nicely. Uh, one of the components that we did, uh, sorry, I'll get to the next one. Uh, we purchased uh, through the grant, a water refill station to put up at our Patriot Lake. So this is a main area uh, in our community that people take a walk around the lake. There's a big playground there. There's uh, basketball courts across the way. And we were able to purchase and put a hydration station in there and refill your water bottles. And we had a, a little mini event. This uh, realized this is during uh, right in the middle of COVID. So it was, it was interesting to try and pull it together. So we didn't have a lot, a lot of people there, but we did what we could do. Uh, we gave away some water bottles and we were grabbing people off as they were walking around the loop of uh, Patriot Lake and bringing them over to show it to them and giving them a water bottle. Um, we refocused some of our funding. Originally, we were just going to be one unit here at Patriot Lake, um, but because we couldn't do as many, um, we had planned to do more in-person outreach events and spend some more, more money on that. We couldn't do that because of COVID. So we pivoted and we've actually been able to purchase two more of these uh, to go uh, at two different locations where our athletic fields are. So it was kind of a nice uh, pivot. And actually, I think in the end of the day, it, it worked out better. And I think the funds are probably used this way in a much better station. So we're looking forward to seeing those even more in the spring. Um, another thing we did, uh, we went to an online presentation of a film, which is kind of nerve wracking when you first start using Zoom and you want a movie to run very nicely and have everybody attend. And of course, the movie had to freeze up about five seconds into it and we had to reset and, and go again. Um, but what we probably liked most about this was partnering with uh, other groups. So Surf Rider, many of you probably heard about that is, is a, an active uh, organization to protect our oceans. Clean Ocean Action is another one, and they seem um, they have a lot of legislation uh, that they're trying to push through. And locally, in, down here in South Jersey, is the Marine Mammal Stranding Center in Brigantine, which uh, aids 
uh, like it says, mammals that are in distress, such as mostly seals and sometimes dolphins, um, but they see the effects of uh, pollution in our oceans. Uh, so not only was the movie, which is very inspiring, but then to kind of bring it down to a local level and say, this is how it affects us right here uh, in New Jersey. So we had a good, good amount of people because we spread the word and all these other organizations spread the word about the movie and we didn't the online event with that. Another thing that was very, very fun, uh, we sponsored a reusable bag design contest for our elementary uh, school grades three to six. Um, and to our surprise, we got over 400 entries uh, that we had to go through, um, but that it actually turned out to be a, a tremendous amount of fun for us to do. Uh, some were, you know, more involved than others. You know, some of the, the little guys were just drawn dinosaurs because that's what they do. Um, but a lot of them, other ones, uh, we had a tough choice bringing it down. Um, but as it turned out, uh, our 11 year old Jessamy here uh, gave us the winning design. You can see her design here. And then we put it onto a Chico bag over here. Um, and we're ex we able to use some clean communities money and produced a whole bunch of these reusable bags, which we gave out at our green market, our farmer's market over the summer of uh, this past year, 2021, and, and several other events as well. So Jessany was very proud. Obviously, she kind of sees, sees them all over town right now. Um, so that was kind of a very unique and fun event. And uh, we had a really good time with that. And I think we reached a lot of students uh, through that and hopefully their, their parents as well. I wanna turn it over to Barb, who's gonna do the second half here. Go Barb. Okay, so um, in order to reach all the various sectors of our township, um, we held a residential information session at one of our local restaurants. Um, this was during a bit of a break in COVID uh, sort of a safe time, although we all wore masks. And um, we had it at our gourmet restaurant and it was well attended. And we had Dini from Anjek zoom in and do an information session for the folks that were there. And we also had a vendor um, that specializes in a plastic free lifestyle. Um, her products are, some of them are shown here and um, well-received. It was a very well-received event. Next slide, Mary. Sure. Okay, okay so we had the uh, reasonable bag design contest for the elementary school. And then we did a video PSA contest for, um, high school and middle school. And uh, it was open to all students in the township that fit into that category. Um, we asked them, we, we had to change the focus a little bit from originally it was just the single use break the uh, single use plastic habit. But then we um, asked them to, to focus on the, the new law. So the winning team is shown here with Mary and I <laughs> at um, an awards dinner, uh, an awards event that we did. It wasn't a dinner. And um, December 1st, we had that at our Galloway Library and we showed the uh, winning films and they are also on our YouTube um, site for Go Green Galloway. So if you wanna see the winning PSAs, they did a fabulous job. Okay, and then the last piece of the pie was to um, reach the businesses in our township. And this was a really important piece. Um, originally, we had planned to do a, an in-person um, event, much like the residential one that we did only with all the businesses. However, in um, late December, early January, as you know, things got pretty hot again with COVID. So we, changed our focus again, and um, we decided to do a Zoom 
event on Thursday, March 3rd for the businesses. We did it in the middle of the afternoon, hoping to reach um, personnel from restaurants because break between their, their lunch and their dinner hours. And we had the um, New Jersey Business Action Center and representatives from New Jersey Clean Communities there to do um, a Zoom session. And prior to that, and this was Mary's brilliant idea, we did a toolkit for um, mainly for the, the restaurants and food services. And what we did was purchase um, alternative packaging for takeout containers. And you see them on the left there. The um, one that looks like a styrofoam clamshell is actually a made out of um, sugar cane and um, totally biodegradable, supposedly. <laughs> and also um, the cardboard containers in the front. Um, a lot of restaurants are already using those. So that was, that was kind of a no brainer. Um, so we also included like a small wax bag with this kit um, so that they could learn that they didn't have to use plastic, little plastic bags for everything. They did, they did the, they could use these wax bags. And then we put everything in a uh, recycled paper bag and we stapled um, a letter, a cover letter on top of that. And, in addition to a lot of other literature, the ANJEC piece that they did, that you did, and um, also information in English and Spanish from the um, New Jersey Business Action Center. So we delivered all of these bags to the food service um, group and restaurants. We had a team of people that went out on a Saturday and then we also delivered to the rest of the businesses in the township that had to deal with any kind of plastic bags, um, just a paper bag with the information um, pieces on the front of that. And so that was the conclusion of our Reduce, Reuse, Inspire um, project. And it was made possible through a $20,000 PSC and G funded grant that we received from Sustainable Jersey. And any further information, you can contact us at gogreengalloway12 um, at gmail.com. And we're, we're thrilled to be here and thank you for having us. Yes, thanks for having us. I think, um, you know, our efforts were really geared to reaching to different avenues to reach different parts of our community. Um, the business community, obviously, you know, using our students and kind of going through them. Um, the dinner that um, uh, Barbara mentioned where we talked about, you know, why we need to reduce plastic and also what are the products that you can use alternative. Um, we geared a lot of that towards our 55 and older community that was there and we had a lot of new people like come through. So this grant, you know, we really tried to brainstorm and, and seek different avenues of, of finding people to present to and make sure not just kind of preach, but explain why. And I think it's very important that we do that part. It isn't just, we won't, we don't like plastic. Well, there's lots of reasons why we don't like plastic. And so we, we tried to really be cognizant of saying, you know, we all kind of know it because we're in the environmental area, but we wanted to share that information and once you do that, it, it does seem to go much, much better. So we're happy to take any questions or if anybody wants to contact us for any more detail, you know, reach out through email, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Um, I, I really love all the effort that you put together in Galloway. And, you know, I understand that this conversation right now is for plastics, but I think it's just such a wonderful roadmap on how to do community engagement. We have a lot of new commissioners um, that are on this program today. And it gives you an idea. You did, you know, you, you had a branding, which was to reduce, reuse, and inspire. Then you worked with bringing a movie in to do education. And then you were out in the community working with students. And um, I think that's, you know, that's really great. And then the businesses as well. So it's a, it's a really good, great roadmap that folks can use regardless of um, what campaign you're working on. 
But for this, we, we have some questions for sure, some really good questions in the chat box. Um, and um, Alex, did you wanna re read out a couple of them so we can get them in the recording? Sure. So um, Deanie, I'll let you take the first stab at these and then you can call on whoever you want. Um, okay. How? So someone said um, they're having trouble uh, conducting outreach and just communicating with restaurants who don't either speak English or don't have English as their first language. What would you recommend? Well, I would, I would recommend, um, I, I'm not sure how the outreach is, is, is happening, but New Jersey Clean Communities does have information in multiple languages. Um, so, or if you have community partners, whether it's through the Girl Scouts or an, another community partner, uh, I would recommend just just walking the streets and, and talking to the businesses in person. Um, what about you folks? What, what recommendations do you have? There is um, a really good piece on the um, New Jersey Business Action Center's website that's in Spanish. And that was one reason we included that in the uh, food service industry bags that we did, we handed out. So um, other than that, we also um, in Galloway Township, when I worked there, I know we, we had people that were interpreters that would help us um, if we needed that. That's great. Thank you. All right. Um, lots of questions about what to do if a restaurant is not complying with the straw um, restriction. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to jump in? Have you seen that in Galloway? Um, I honestly haven't been to any restaurants <laughs> except for takeout. <laughs> but um, there is a little card that's available through um, Clean Communities, I believe. And um, it's a it's a little like a little tent card that could be put on a table to alert the, the restaurant that they should be asking about straws, not just handing them out. Yeah, that's it what I... like. Uh, it does seem like most of the restaurants are complying. I mean, really, it does save them money by not just automatically handing them out. So I actually been to a couple of different places and I, I've noticed that. And then the fast food are actually have all moved to uh, to paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, recently, so which is great. Um, probably the most uh, complaining I've heard is at Wawa because mm. the people have to come up and get it, but they have to pay for their stuff anyway, so they have to ask the cashier for it. But I know that Wawa is changing some of their lids and such, so ultimately it should hopefully trans transform over. If you, I know it is straws upon request, and if you are in a restaurant that continues to provide straws even after you spoke with the, the restaurant management, I recommend that you connect with the Department of Health. They're the ones that are managing straw enforcement. Let's see. Um, and then I think one of the other questions I saw here, we had some questions on the life cycle of reusable bags. What happens um, at the end of life of reusable bags? And I, I threw in the chat that depending on the fabric, for the most part though, you can toss it into textile recycling. You guys wanna add anything more on that? Um. There is, there is a question about that. And um, the cloth bags, of course, are the ones that, that would be the most durable in the long run. And um, like you said, when they are fully worn out, they could go in textile recycling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there's a question about what these bags can uh, be real made quick, of. Before, you, um, before we move on, I think sure. Sandra wanted to throw something in. I was, I was really going to echo um, what was said already. It really depends on the material because um, we were looking at reusable bags could be made of hemp. It could be, be made of cotton. It could be made of, you know, there's like mushroom products now. It really depends. So, I mean, cotton's great. I mean, look for, look for anything like, you know, reusable is anything that has stitched handles can be washed and reused 125 uh, times. So, um, hopefully you'll be, get a lot of use out of them before you even have to think about recycling them too. And yes, there are bags that are made from plastic. What we encourage is to look for post-consumer recycled content. 
So those are polyethylene bags, but they can definitely have uh, post-consumer recycled contents. I think it's and important to do when you're doing um, when you're doing like the free giveaways and such to to stick to the higher quality. Maybe have to do less bags, but mm -hmm. at this point, I just feel like so everybody has these bags. So you know maybe quant quality over quantity on them as well. Very good point. And shout out to Dan Bachalis, who has been using his bag since the 1970s. So I feel like at some point, uh, we're going to have to have a webinar bragging about who has the list <laughs> reusable bags. Yes. So I think that would be very fun. Yes. I think Dan, <laughs> you are definitely in the winner spot there. That That's a long time. That's, that's great. Um, there's a question from Kelly Miola. Uh, no relation to Sandra Miola, which I found out. Um, but I don't know, maybe we'll make a connection here tonight. But um, people in my town have asked about bags used by grocery stores for shop and home and grocery delivery services. How are these bags going to be regulated? All right, so this is going to depend on the grocery stores, but shop at home and delivery like Instacart or um, is they cannot use plastic bags. They would still have to come up with a reusable bag or a, a tote um, program. And each store from ShopRite to Wegmans, et cetera, it's gonna be a little different. So that's a bit of a wait and see on that. Yeah, and uh, Jen also um, put in the chat a plug for, um, uh, we are very lucky to have our own Dini Checo on um, the Plastics Advisory Council. So that was something that was set um, in the law uh, that there is a council of 17, 16 or 17 people mm -hmm. um, made up of a wide variety of stakeholders and interest groups, including businesses, academics, environmentalists, um, and representatives from government to um, advise on questions such as that. So the DEP has been doing outreach to those businesses to see how they want to handle it. Um, and the advisory council will be able to provide guidance, advice, everything like that. So crazy enough that it's happening in two months. Um, so we are starting to ramp up uh, all that information about that. Thanks, Alex. And Tom was asking, are there any grants available still for reusable bags? And yes, there are. So every municipality gets clean New Jersey Clean Communities funding, as well as they have a recycles, recycling tonnage grant funding. So you can use those to um, certainly get reusable bags, or, or you can partner with a, a local business and uh, use that as a branding opportunity for the township, the Environment Commission, the Green Team and help um, support that local business and, and, and work with them and, and uh, try to get some reusable bags out that way as well. I am just uh, perusing the questions here. Is there anything else that I, uh, anything specific that I missed? Do, do yes, so someone, someone asked a very good question, a very prescient and relevant question about how um, acknowledging that food pantries and Meals on Wheels are uh, facing some struggles right now. Um, so how can ECs, how can residents um, help? Very easy question, I know. Look at everyone jumping mm -hmm. to answer that. <laughs> I think Jen, one of the things, take... yeah, one of the things ECs could do is ask for, um, or work with your food banks and pantries, first of all, and, and have a conversation with them. Um, Two, you could do a drive for new bags because uh, you know new is, is going to be better, but new reusable bags to be donated to the food banks and food pantries. Um, so if somebody is considering you know donation of food, if they could go ahead and make a reusable bag donation as well, I'm sure that would be um, very uh, you know very well supported. Please also know that we are working with the governor's office, the speaker's office, and with the um, Senate sponsor for, for this bill, um, Chairman Senator Smith, Bob Smith, um, to identify sources of revenue so that we can um, make sure that food pantries have access to reusable bags. Um, we've worked, we're also working with environmental justice and community advocates and have heard that this is a doable thing, um, but it may take a little bit more time and we need to get the resources into the hands. So we're, we're working the financial end. If ECs can work the donation end as well, um, we'll get there. Um, and we are also gonna work through the council 
to look at the enforcement end and, and there might just need a little bit more time to get to compliance, but we will get there. We were, we were on a call with, a, with our business um, forum and that question also came up and we were fortunate enough to have um, a representative from the um, ACUA, Atlantic County Utilities Authority. And they had talked to our larger food banks and most of those food banks were using cardboard boxes and really didn't have any issues with that. Um, and as well as using uh, paper bags and such. But my, my, one of my thoughts was, I wonder if we could somehow combine like our grocery stores and our food banks and the grocery stores get so many boxes would those boxes then be able to make their way to the food bank? It just might be a, a better source for them. But that was just a thought that had happened when I was talking about Yeah, that's about why the I think day. coordinating with the pantries is good because you don't want to overwhelm them with exactly. a giant shipment of boxes. What are they yeah. supposed to do with that? <laughs> um, but there are stores like Aldi and I know Costco, they already use boxes. And yes. so th this is going to be a culture shift. It's going to be a behavioral shift. I mean, I know when I started using reusable bags, you know, 20 years, something years ago at this point there was perpetually the oh gosh i gotta go back to the car and get them you know you get to the, wait don't don't touch my cart i'm gonna go get my bags and it's you know it, it's a behavior change and and there are more people that are going to go through that and some people are talking about yes there's always resistance um but we'll get there and and so i would say first and foremost let's be kind we've all been through so much in the past two plus years. So if you see a restaurant, a bar, a store, a pantry that's not complying, assume it's because they don't know, or two, assume it's because they're just struggling with it. And so offer to help. And, and by getting there um, and by being kind to one another and offering support, we're going to get there. We'll get to the enforcements and the fines at some point, but it's not going to happen on May 5th. So um, let's not, you know, go from May 4th to May 5th and, and look for thousand dollar fines all over the place. Let's, let's help people comply. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Great, great comments for sure. So you're probably wondering what's next, you know, how do we, how do we um, highlight this this law and how do we get information out to the public? I highly recommend that you follow folks like Anjak or Green Galloway, Gringo Galloway on their social media. Um, we know we're always posting, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can just go ahead and reshare what we have. Um, and on NJ uh, NJNoPlastics.org, we we have a resources section. And there's some press releases, municipal um, newsletter templates that you can use to get the information out. And bagupnj.com also has downloadable resources um, that you can use. So just get it out in the press, keep talking about it. There's a bunch of flyers on our website. Um, and definitely reach out to us at info.anjek.org if you have any more questions or we can you need something specific. Is that yeah, good? Someone had asked if there were any um, social media images, graphics, memes. Dini, where can they find things like that? Well, I think they can find those on, um, on uh, Anjak's Facebook. <laughs> so that's where they're going to go. Um, our, our colleague Cheryl actually manages our, our um, Facebook page. So she does a great job with all of that information. And over the next couple of months, as as the May the 4th be with us, um, we will be posting even more social media um, uh, on our on our so, uh, on our Facebook page. And they'll you can just go ahead and share that. So thank you so much. I think that's it. It's a wrap is it, for for uh, <laughs> this uh, this fundamentals course. Anything else? Am I forgetting? Wonderful. No, I just want to thank all of you. Thank We've had you. six sessions. We've had wonderful attendance at all of them. Um, thank you all for being with us. If you or somebody on your EC has, has missed these sessions or you just couldn't get enough of them and you want to go back and rewatch, um, we'll be sending out the links and they will be on our YouTube channel at Anjack Views. Um, we invite you to follow us on social media. We're most active on Facebook and Twitter. So please follow us there. Uh, if you don't get our emails and you want to, go ahead and send an email to info at anjack.org. Maybe somebody can post that in the chat as well. And if you have any questions, that email is highly monitored. So go ahead and 
-hmm. email us at info at anjack org. So we ask you to please remember us as Earth Day rolls around. Um, if you're making contributions to organizations, please remember ANJAC so that we can continue to bring you programs like this. And if you need resources for your fairs and festivals, tap into us as well, because we've got some stuff that might be fun for you if you're doing in-person events this year. We hope to see you on April 22nd, if not before, um, when you join us for our virtual Earth Day. So thank you, everybody. Have a great and night. Thanks, Sandra, Mary, and Barbara. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank